What's up, friends? Today I've got a demo of the Neural DSP Tone King Imperial Mark II plugin. This is an exciting plugin, especially with uh, Neural right on the cusp of having the Quad Cortex able to load in plugins. So I thought today I'd give us just a first impressions look at the plugin. There's a demo available over on their site if you want to check it out for yourself. I bought this plugin with my own money. I use it in the studio. I haven't used it a ton. Um, and I honestly have not clicked through all of the settings. So that's what we're going to do today is get in there, get under the hood, take a look at everything that the plugin offers. It runs both inside a DAW and standalone, which is pretty cool. And it's a replication of a Tone King Imperial which is a iteration on a Fender Deluxe Reverb with a lead circuit. It's really a unique plugin. It's also an incredible sounding amp in real life. So I'm excited to check out the plugin with you today. Let's dive into Ableton and see what we've got. All right, so this is what the plugin looks like when you open it up. My signal chain today is my Harmony Silhouette with the Bigsby. I love this guitar. It's got mini humbuckers in it. They sound great. They're super bright. It's going straight into my UAD Apollo Twin into the high z input in the front. There's not any processing on that channel. It's going straight into the amp. No processing after the amp. Right into Ableton and uh, directly into your ear holes. So this is how the plugin loads in. It's plugin uh, reset all settings. Already, it sounds really, really good. All those dials, for the most part, are at noon. I've dialed in a little bit of the the spring reverb on the amp because nobody ever likes to play totally dry. Um, and then it's got effects and cabinet emulation we're going to get into all of this um what effects after the amp uh you can even turn the thing around and take a look at the stuff that they have on the back the only thing i could see being useful is maybe this uh hf comp um but everything else is like attenuation it's all like physical amp features that like the power thing. I never understood why they have these. Maybe that's so that you can, you can bypass the amp. Yeah, that's what it is. You can bypass the amp and just use the effects if you wanted to use a different amp or if you wanted to maybe run the wet effects into another instance of this plugin, you could do that too. So let's get back over to the amp face and uh, we're going to take a look at how all of this sounds. So again, immediately... <laughs> That's really good guitar tone. I don't have anything dialed back on my tone. This is a pretty bright guitar by its nature. And that's pretty bright tone, but it doesn't sound ice picky or overwhelming. I think it would fit, sit really nicely in a mix. Let's see how much gain we have on tap. We're first here on this rhythm circuit. So we're gonna see um, everything that, that's going on with these. So there's your gain. Let's dial back a little bit of that treble. Okay, yeah, so it does that that cool, like, low-end. That sound right at the beginning of my pick attack and my strum. It's, it's almost like you're overloading a little bit of low-end, but in that way that the deluxe reverb does, and I really like that. Let's uh, maybe pull a little bit of the low-end out and see kind of like that. So this is all the gain on tap for the rhythm channel. Sounds great. Need some low in. I really like that. I really like that. Then we've got a lead channel over here. I'm not sure what this one's voice like. It doesn't sound um, like a regular deluxe reverb, but it's got volume, tone, and a mid bite, which is really useful. So uh, actually, let's let's set this one all the way at noon. This is what the lead channel sounds like with all the knobs set on noon. <laughs> Oh yeah. 
So not quite as much in the low end department. It's a little more mid heavy. There's the tone all the way up. Maybe on our bridge pickup. Yeah. Tone all the way down. And if it sounds almost like. I'll bet it's just after the gain. It sounds like it's got almost less drive with the tone all the way down. Let's put this back at noon. Let's crank the volume, see how much gain is on tap on the lead channel. That's cool. So it's almost got a little bit of that fuzz feeling where it's like it's just falling apart at the low end. Rad. Let's get this tone up a little. And let's try this mid bite out. Sounded great. Maybe try like some clean. Roll off the volume on the guitar a little bit. Back up. Maybe some bright. Yeah, so there's the two channels. Let's go back over to the rhythm section. Let's check out the tremolo because it is a deluxe reverb after all. Some nice, subtle, slow trim. shot kind of effect but it's still not like a square wave it's still obviously a sine wave interesting very cool okay so there's the tremolo there's all the switches on the front panel again like i said you've got a handful of things you can check out on the back, but again, these seem to be a little more like why you'd need to bypass the rhythm channel. Maybe it sounds different. Let's try. Switch it back. I don't know. I can't tell off. All right, to my ear, it sounds exactly the same. So I don't know what the purpose of that is, but it's there and it's authentic. So let's check out, let's check out our dry effects. So first thing, it does have a wah pedal and it's got auto wah. Um, I'm not gonna try to play wah. All I know is, and I can't play all of that because of <laughs> copyright. So it's got a wah. Oh, it's got a tuner. Let's make sure the guitar is in tune. It's got the mute function, which I like. And you can choose to have it unmuted if you just want to hear the guitar too. Seems accurate. Easy to use. I like that. It would be neat if it had the option for a strobe tuner too. That's more of a preferential thing, but I've really gotten really gotten excited about the way that strobe tuners show 
where the tune is, and a lot of times they're really accurate. Okay, here's our dry effects. We've got a compressor. Let's squish it. Fast attack. And some volume, we have to compensate some makeup gain. Set it back to slow attack. Put some of those transients through. Cool. My favorite way to run a compressor is with a slower attack. And the blend set to about 30%. Compression all the way up. You're basically running parallel compression on the input of the guitar. And so it's sending the dry signal with all of the dynamics unaffected. And then the compressed signal with a bunch of <laughs> compression on it. Blending those together produces a really nice compression sound. That's a good compressor. It's a good... Good... Uh, plug-in pedal compressor not too complicated for a from like a studio perspective um so let's leave a little bit of compression on because i always kind of like to have that um check out our first stage overdrive i looked on their website it might be in the manual but i don't know that these are based on particular circuits they do sound different uh, i think that sounds great Let's crank it and see how much it's got. So like a kind of transparent stage, stage one overdrive. Got levels so you can boost with it if you want to go like clean boost. So that's pushing the front of the amp. I love that they've included two overdrives because there's nothing like stacking overdrive pedals. Here's flavor two. So that's kind of like a tube screamer thing where it's dropping a little bit of low end and pushing mids. Let's pull back some of the treble and bass. And let's crank the drive, see how much this one's got on tap. Quite a bit. Let's see what they sound like stacked. Let's push. So that's, those fit really well together. Kind of got some of that fuzz sound. Cool, so those are the dry effects. Let's let's do wet effects next and then we can look at the speaker cap. All right, so we've got a chorus. Now, I always love when a chorus pedal has got a blend knob. So dry wet. This is more guitar and less chorus. And here's 100% wet chorus. 
sounds like a stereo chorus too, so it's got some movement side to side now. Let's hear how deep it gets. Let's go slow. Kind of a swimmy chorus. Oh, nice. Wow, so it sounds like the, the rate doesn't get super fast. That's barely moving. Yeah, so it's not going to do anything like rotary cab or, or anything like that, but it's a pretty straightforward, standard, get a good chorus sound chorus, which is always nice. There are chorus pedals that have so many knobs and settings that you can get them sounding really whacked out. All right, here's the delay. From what I can tell, it's just one algorithm, um, but it's got some mojo. You don't have any control over modulation or anything like that, but it, it does sound like it's got some in there to my ear. Let's turn the chorus off and just listen to the delay. tap tempo, all of which are assignable to MIDI parameters over here. So if you want to set up a MIDI controller to switch settings as you go, or you want to set your DAW to write mode, um, it'll pick up all of the pedal changes and, and all of that. So here's more delay. <laughs> is whoa okay so it's almost like a it's like a half note delay is what it is that's funny that there's like a zillion switches where it's when there's a half I don't know I don't know <laughs> what it thinks it's doing dotted that's a nice delay all of this is really high quality what I love about the effects so far is that I mean, all of them are just three knobs on a compressor, four knobs on an overdrive is actually more than I was expecting to see. One of them, at least maybe with a tone. Chorus with three knobs. Delay, it's a dual delay, so it's going to do a ton. And it's got uh, high pass and low pass filters. It's got a dual mode, so you could do the classic dotted eighth quarter note thing. And it's doing them. It's doing them left and right, so they're not cascading into one another. But yeah, that would be nice. A nice feature to have with a dual delay would be to have them be set in either parallel or in series. So yeah, that seems to be maybe a little bit of a, a little bit of a con. But again, I mean, just having the high pass and low pass on there. I think that little that delay sounds great. And there may be a way to do it. If you know a way to set these to where they are run in series, I would love to hear it. Let's make sure that our spring reverb is down. Turn our delay off, listen to our reverb. Yeah. There's so much going on there. That's some kind of modulated reverb. It's got high pass and low pass filters as well. It can go 100% wet, nice. Here's it with maybe more of a proper blend. 
Uh, let's set the decay and see what it sounds like when it gets real washy. I think that sounds gorgeous. Can it infinite? Yep. And what's fascinating is it's still changing ever so slightly as it goes. Now it feels like it may have kind of locked into what it's holding, but that's that's an infinite hold. So we can pull it off and it will slowly go away. Keep playing that chord wrong. Very cool. So there's our reverb. Let's go check out the cab sim, and then I'm just gonna click through some of the factory settings. I was looking at this earlier, and there's like a zillion of them. They have a whole bunch from artists that I I know Pete Thorne, I know Rabia. <laughs> I have to look up some of these other guys because I don't know who they are. And they got some factory settings, but man, that's that's a bunch of presets. So what's great here, this is also something that I'd be curious to know about. If you know, they've got something listed E33 and then H30. And I don't know if those are, I wouldn't assume they're different versions of the mics. Maybe they're different like capture techniques or technology or something. I'm not sure. But then you can also load custom IRs and you can load two of them, which is just just a great feature to have for as good as all these cabs sound know that a lot of guys have irs that they're familiar with and they're used to and help their guitar sit in the mix like they need them to each mic has got a phase control and you can also only run you looks like you can just run one mic um, each of them can be panned and then you can either set distance of the mic in position with these knobs or you could just grab the mic itself and move it around Left to right looks like the position, and then up and down is the distance. So you're not moving down on the speaker cone, obviously. You're moving farther away from the amp. And it looks like the mic graphic gets a little bit bigger as it comes closer. But, yeah, you can click through. They've got a, a 409, a 421. I don't know that I'm familiar with the 184. You can go Royer Ribbon Mic 121. Kind of get some of that low end. Let's get this 57 right on the cone. Yeah, so it doesn't look like you can mess with the angle. So like you can't do like a 45 degree approach with the 57, for instance, which helps kind of dial out some of that, that top end. But you may be able to get what you need by just dragging it around like this. Can we mess with the, oh my gosh, you can. I didn't think that you could do that. You can mess with the controls of the amp from this page. That's amazing. So if you were to set it like, <laughs> it doesn't want to get bigger than that on my screen. Yeah, but you can go in and you can change your, your amp settings there. That's awesome. Yeah, so there's the speaker cabinet. There's all the, Basically all the controls, I think I've clicked through all of it. Yeah, and you can save you can save presets and they're gonna save to the plug. You can save presets and they're gonna save to the plugin library. Those will pull up anywhere that you're running the plugin. So yeah, let's uh let's finish the video out. I forgot about that. Yeah, this is a great feature. <laughs> because the Tone King Imperial comes in bunch of different skins you can actually click through 
and change the skin of the amp to just, you know, suit your fancy, or if you want to set them and identify the preset that you're on according to the color of the amp, it changes that those skin colors save with the, the presets that you make. So as we click through some of these artist presets, the colors are going to change, and that's great. Okay. Yeah, let's just play some guitar and listen to what it sounds like. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Make sure to subscribe. I'm going to put out a bunch of electric guitar, bass guitar, keys, all of that content coming up. Again, thanks so much for stopping in and watching the video today. Mm-hmm. <laughs>